Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to newness of life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promise pools of water for the parched, and you give us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water for the water in this pond and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness grace and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
This is the feast of victory for our God. Almighty God, your blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to trust that as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Greetings from California. Our first lesson today is from the first chapter of Acts, beginning at the sixth verse. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today is from the fourth chapter of First Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory 
which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. disciples of all nations, says the Lord, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Holy Gospel for this Ascension Sunday is in the 24th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to the eleven and those with him, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he sat to them. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and arise from the dead and on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With social distancing, it may become a little crowded sometimes, in our homes. Sometimes it may feel good just to have some time to be alone. We can meditate and pray and read the scriptures. We can rest and be restored. And Christ can reveal himself to us, even in our times of solitude. I recently read about children seeking adoption. One young boy said he had been a foster, in a foster homes most of his life. He never felt that he belonged. He knew that his relationship with his 
foster family could end at any time. If there was another boy or girl in his family, they were always designated as foster brother or sister. And he wanted to be in a family where he could feel secure and where he felt that he belonged. We all want to feel like that we belong. We need the daily minimum requirement of nurture and validation. The disciples had a very close and wonderful relationship with Christ for those three wonderful years. They walked with him and they talked with him and he told them that they were his own. When they had questions, he would answer them. And when they were afraid, he would comfort them. And if they were wrong, he would correct them. But then came the time when Christ began to mention to the disciples that he would no longer be with them. And we can appreciate how sensitive he must have been in regards to what they were feeling as they contemplated that he would no longer be with them. And what Christ said to them was far too comforting to them. How agitated and even anxious they must have felt that Jesus was going to no longer be with them. And then 40 days after Easter, he went with the disciples to the hillside, as we heard in the gospel, and bodily ascended into heaven in their very presence. So we celebrate the festival of the Ascension this morning. And on the Christian calendar, the Ascension took place actually last Tuesday. But none of us woke up last Tuesday prepared to celebrate the festival of the Ascension. It was not even mentioned in some of the individual devotional books that we may have. Bill Hively, the organist and choir director here at First Lutheran, felt it would be good for us to celebrate the Ascension this morning because of its profound significance for us in our lives. On May 12, 1937, the coronation of King George VI took place in London's Westminster Abbey. As the crown was placed on his head, the crowd shouted, God save the King! Now the festival of ascension is Christ's coronation as King of Kings and Lord of Lords as he ascended bodily to be at the right hand of the Father. And the angels rejoiced as the Lamb slain for our salvation was enthroned, proclaiming the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Before he was crucified, on the cross with a crown of thorns, Christ realized and they pro and proclaimed the purpose of his very coming to be our Lord and Savior. And the inscription above him, nailed to the cross, described the crime that he was alleged to have committed committed, for which he was being crucified. And on the inscription it said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And the watching crowds mocked him, because Jesus, who had saved others, would not save himself. No one cried out, God save the King. Instead they shouted, he trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. But Christ stayed on the cross. 
and by his suffering and death, the King saved us. Christ, the thorn-crowned King, obeyed the Father even to the point of dying on the cross. And his body was taken down and then sealed in a tomb, and then God the Father saved the King. And on the first Easter morning, Christ was raised triumphant. And now, on the day of his ascension, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And today we can recognize him as our sovereign Lord forevermore. Having ascended to heaven, Christ would no longer be present with the disciples in his physical presence. So it's difficult for the disciples to say goodbye, and they're looking long, longingly toward heaven. But Christ does not often appear where we expect him to be. He was expected to be with his parents, but they found him later in the temple with the scholars and priests. And he was expected to be in the tomb, but instead he was raised triumphant and he ascended to heaven to prepare a place for us so that where me, we may be, where he will, where where he is, we shall be also. With his disciples in the midst of the storm on the Sea of Galilee, Christ simply said, Peace, be still. So far, no further, and the storm was still. The coronavirus travels throughout the world, causing more devastation, death, and destruction than any storm. And since Christ is now our ascended Lord and Savior on high, we can pray that he would say to the virus, so far and no further. And we pray that you be surrounded by Christ's protection and that he keep you and your loved ones safe from the virus. If, however, we contract the virus, Christ will embrace us in his love and give us spiritual healing and wholeness and believing in his eternal power and healing spiritually, we also will have the promise and the assurance of eternal life and victory over death itself. Christ promises his disciples that he would not leave them alone or powerless. They would have power from on high. When the Spirit is working in us, it has been said, God will have us doing things that we thought we couldn't remember doing. And next Sunday, we will celebrate the Festival of the Ascension. And on that day, the Holy Spirit appeared on the heads of the thousands with cloven tongues of fire. And there were 2,000 believers, and the Christian church was begun. The disciples were commissioned to go and tell others about all that Christ had accomplished. And that's our calling as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. A man once found a small piece of mirror that he polished it so it was smooth, and he kept it for years in his wallet, and would it open it once in a while to use it to reflect light into dark places. It served to remind him that he could bring the light of Christ 
into the situations and circumstances where healing could take place. We too can reflect the light of Christ into the dark places of our world. The director of the Apostle Supper here at First Lutheran Church has visited where the homeless live under bridges to bring the light and love of Christ to penetrate the darkness in their lives. Reflecting the light of Christ, we can poke holes in the darkness. And the Ascended Lord has put the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty children. He's got you and me, brother. He's got the whole world in his hands. The thief on the cross on the Friday hung beside Jesus transcending all of the suffering and death that surrounded him, he can look to Jesus and say, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Rabbi Eli Weissel lost all the members of his family during the Holocaust, and he himself was a prisoner for years. And he wrote a book entitled, After Auschwitz, Can We Still Believe? And years later, he spoke to a large crowd of people about his experiences as a prisoner during the Holocaust. And then after speaking for about an hour, he asked the question, After Auschwitz, Can We Still Believe? And after a brief pause, he said, no, but we must. There's no other option but to believe that God is in charge and that God rules and wills only good. And he can work good even out of evil. And we can believe because our Lord and Savior has ascended into heaven that he reigns and rules. And we can say, in the words of the Alleluia Chorus, in Hamlet's Messiah, the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. On this Memorial Day weekend, we give thanks for all who paid the supreme sacrifice for the freedoms that we enjoy today. And we pray and bless all of you who remember your loved ones, that you can be assured their death was not in vain, and that they are embraced in God's eternal love and held in precious memory by so many of us. Amen.
faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate our Lord's Ascension, let us join with Christians around the globe asking God to receive our prayers. Our response will be, we pray to you, good Lord. O oh God, your might upholds the cosmos, your mercy sustains the universe. To you, the enthroned on high and enthroned in our hearts, we pray. We pray to you, good Lord. That the church be enlivened to be the body of Christ, that bishops and pastors lead with visionary wisdom, and that all baptized be witnesses to your mercy and might. We pray to you, good Lord. That the earth be preserved from disastrous climate, that the animals and their young be safeguarded, and that the trees and bushes be protected for their fruit and beauty. We pray to you, good Lord. That wars between nations and violence within each population cease, that the leaders of nations enact justice for their people, and that the legislators be granted wisdom for their difficult decisions. We pray to you, good Lord. That those with coronavirus be healed, that those facing death be comforted, that those returning to society remain healthy, that physicians and nurses be granted endurance, that hospitals be equipped for their work, that researchers discover a vaccine, and that the future waves of illness be averted. We pray to you, good Lord, that the poor be fed and clothed and housed, that the unemployed find jobs, 
and that those we name before you receive health and wholesomeness and wholeness. Sandy, Myrtle, Joan, Leslie, Greta, Phyllis, Jennifer, Ryan, Pastor Price, Anna, and Jackie, and any others we want to name in our hearts. We pray to you, good Lord, that teachers be preserved in their care of our youth. And like Nicholas Copernicus and uh, Leonard Orler, to whom we commemorate today, scientists be supported in their exploration of your creation and that theologians assist us in receiving the mysteries of the ascension. We pray to you, good Lord, that our private sorrows and joys be welcomed by you. We pray, we pray to you, good Lord. Eternal God, we praise you for the devoted sacrifice of your servants who have laid down their lives that we might live. Into your holy keeping we commend them and humbly pray that we, like they, may give generously and never count the cost, asking no reward except the knowledge of your abiding love. We pray to you, good Lord. For those serving in the armed forces, keep those deployed around the world safe and healthy, especially Kevin, Frank, Ali, Wesley, Zach, Milland, Keenan, Jonathan, Sean, Elijah, and Chaplain Dominic, we pray to you, good Lord, that we lodge your presence in the word and that we find our life in the cross of Christ and that at the end we join with Virgin Gabriel and all the saints in your everlasting kingdom. We pray to you, good Lord. O oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Receive our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, ascended for us, and reigning in your glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Will hold.
as we call God our Father and pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Christ has risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.